Hi, this is Maximo and welcome to Maximo's Travels. Join me as we tour the Capita Spring Building in Singapore, followed by a tour around Singapore's Chinatown. A must see to any Singapore visit is a visit to the Capita Spring Building, otherwise known as the JP Morgan Building. This is located conveniently on top of an MRT station and sits in the middle of Singapore's uh, business area, sort of halfway between the river and Chinatown. Entry to the building and the viewing areas are free, but they are time limited and I'll put the times that you can visit on the screen. It's a very impressive building. It starts off being quite impressive in the foyer with soaring uh, ceilings and a very impressive uh, video display of flowers and orchids which are synonymous with Singapore. After admiring the foyer we make our way to the 51st floor to the rooftop garden and boy what a view it is. Here I am at the top of the world at the Capital Spring Sky Garden. It's on the 51st floor of the Capital Spring building, which is a JP Morgan building here in Singapore. Spectacular views on a perfect day, nice and sunny, hardly a cloud in the sky. Really enjoying the views of this place. Fantastic. Entry is free. It's not that tall of a building by any standard, but it does offer spectacular views of Marina Bay Sands, as well as Singapore's CBD and other attractions. On a clear day, you can see for miles and miles. And a word of warning, the uh, building rooftop is closed in quite inclement weather or very, very windy weather, because as you can see, it is open to the elements. The rooftop offers spectacular gardens and really stunning um, areas where you can look out onto the surrounding cityscape. There were a few people there when we visited, but uh, not spectacularly busy. I'd consider this perhaps a hidden gem in Singapore. We caught a lift down to level 20 and proceeded to walk on around the outside of the buildings, past gardens and walkways, all the way to level 17. Some of the walkways were quite high and if you have an issue with heights, some of those walkways were a little bit terrifying. The building in the middle of the screen, the tall white one, is our hotel, the Swiss Hotel. Marvellous views from there. I've done a separate review of that uh, hotel and there's a better view of it there. After an hour or so of walking around Capita Spring, we decided to walk to Chinatown. It's probably a 10 or 15 minute walk from Capita Spring to Chinatown. And we decided to head through some uh, alleyways and covered malls and past a couple of shrines and, and other points of interest.
Our second stop was the Amoy Street Food Centre. This is towards the south end of Chinatown and featured many, many uh, food stalls uh, and hawker market type street food establishments. There were a couple of uh, Michelin starred um, stalls here and you can tell that they were Michelin starred because they had a queue of people of about 50 to 100 people in, uh, in each of them. I imagine that's where the best food is to be had. Here's a queue to one of the more popular stalls. It was mid-morning and still a bit early for us to have lunch, so we decided to continue our tour of Chinatown by heading down towards the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple. The temple serves as a Buddhist temple as well as a museum. And looking at the interior and exterior of the building, you'd think it'd be a couple of centuries old at least, but the building was in fact built in 2007. It was built to house the uh, sacred Buddha tooth, uh, speculated to be recovered from the Buddha's funeral pile, and that was collected in India. The building, thankfully, is fully air conditioned. It made a really nice respite from the oppressive heat of outside. Now, I didn't actually go into the museum. I did go and have a look at some of the um, uh, statues and other ornaments, and I thought, yeah, that was probably enough culture for me. The temple is right opposite the Chinatown uh, food market which is located on the first floor. And again, it's a whole series of stalls featuring traditional Chinese uh, and Asian food. It was oppressively hot uh, here, but we did uh, decide to have some lunch. I had some absolutely fantastic chicken rice, which comprised chicken, boiled chicken and rice with some bok choy in oyster sauce, chicken soup, and some really nice and hot spicy chili sauce. The meal cost only five Singapore dollars, which is pretty good value, and it was utterly scrumptious. The stall owner that you can see in the background, uh, I started talking to him and he said that um, he'd been working making chicken rice since he was eight years old and he probably looked around about uh, late 60s, so it's a very, very long time to be making chicken rice in uh, Singapore's extreme heat because the market was not air conditioned at all. After we ate, we made our way to the ground floor and checked out the very many uh, stalls in the Chinatown complex, selling everything from shoes, clothes, uh, knickknacks, ornaments and souvenirs. I picked up a couple of Singapore t-shirts from this complex while Joe picked up uh, two or three uh, embroidered Asian styled um, glasses cases. All in all fantastic uh, location to come to really get immersed into the Chinese culture that uh, is in Singapore. Afterwards we had a wander down Pagoda Street and found our way to the main pagoda in Chinatown. We finished up with a brief tour of the Sri Mariaman Temple. The route that we took is on the screen uh, if you're interested in repeating our journeys. It was damn hot. I think we were uh, a little bit exhausted both from the walking and from the extreme heat. 
it did uh, feel like it was about 40 degrees well that's what my phone said it was probably about 33 degrees with uh, it feels like 40 degrees so we decided to head back to our hotel via Singapore's highly efficient MRT system we walked to Chinatown MRT station and made our way back to City Hall and our hotel I do hope you've liked this video. If so, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Now until our next adventure in Singapore, take care and bye.